Jill. I'm your artist for this month and we're doing landmark projects and our first landmark project is Seton Carew. So here we go. We're going to start with a little dot using a fine liner. It's an Edding fine liner. So we put that at the top of the page. A little dot to whether you want the clock tower top to be. Next we're going to draw about four centimeters using a ruler to the left. One, two, three, four centimeters to the right. Now we're going to take a vertical line and press the ruler down so we make a nice straight line from the top all the way to the bottom of your page. Make it, make sure it's not going to be wonky. Right, so on the left hand side, a nice line, pressing the ruler down firmly again to the bottom. We're going to put a little line at the top. It's like a stepped shape. Oh, it goes down in different steps across and a little extra bit there. This is a feature of the Art Deco era, which was 1920s to 1930s. That's when the architecture was took on the fashion from Egypt, like an Egyptian pylon. Yeah, there we go. It was built by the pharaohs. So you've got your lines drawn. Next, we're going to take a cup. You can take a plastic cup or any type of cup, and we're going to draw. And we're going to draw around that cup. Making a clock face. There we go, that's a clock face. You're going to take, you're going to make 12 numerals here, yeah? to all numbers on the clock face. They were very simple designs then, very basic. We called it minimalism. And there was a movement called the Bauhaus, which was from Germany, and they designed very simple forms and shapes in their buildings and kitchenware. There we go. A few more lines there. It's like 10 o'clock. About halfway there. 9 o'clock. A few more lines going across. So we've got 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm picking that up a bit. Seven and eight o'clock. Right. Next, we'll put in the clock for the clock hands. Again, a very simple design, just a little bit larger, a little bit thicker than. You can use a ruler. I tend to use just my hand to draw with the next we're gonna do some wavy lines at the top horizontally and another wavy line going right across on the left hand side and below it a really dip like a valley and up like a V shape and again like another V shape and up that represents the cloud formations right next what we're going to do we'll do some more detail within the clock face before we do anything else and right to the left now 
part of the detail of the crack. And we're going to put a few more lines going down vertically. Part of the features of this beautiful clock tower. So, so it was the Art Deco era. It was built in 1938 along with a curved long rectangular bus station. It's actually got a grade to Liston, so it's a listed heritage building. Yeah, that means it's preserved. And it is one of the tallest areas of Seton Carew. You can see it about two miles north in Hartlepool town itself as you walk along the promenade. Right, I'm just going around thickening up these lines a little bit. And did you know, interestingly enough, that Seton Carew gets its name, especially the last name, from a French family who owned, a Norman French family, so who owned the land back in about the 13th, 12th century. So I think the spelling was C-A-R-O-U. Right, just looking at these lines again. It's up to you if you just wanted to leave it quite simply a very fine line. Oop, we've got to press that down on firmly. Uh, there we go. I'm going to fill in that a little bit, give some more detail. I'll pull that right down to the bottom. There we go. The more pressure you put on your pen, the more darker the line. I'll pull that all the way up to the top and the same with this one. If you're confident enough, just imagine there's a dot at the bottom of the page and then look to the top of your page. There we go. And one more line going straight up vertically. Right. Now we're going to add our technique, hatching. We're not talking about chickens or eggs. Mind you, that's a terrible yolk. Groan, says everybody. Uh, you can see I'm doing lines, parallel lines, and they add a little bit of shading. And I'm going across the lines, the lines that go down are our hatching lines. The lines that go across, we call it cross hatching for obvious reasons. There we go, from left to right, and they can join across the top. A little bit more cross hatching, guys. And we'll have some down this side and across. I'll have some more underneath the top of the clock tower. You can make some of your lines a little bit longer if you want. And they can curve around and be shorter, some can be shorter, some can be longer. There we go. And underneath the clock face just gives it the picture a little bit more depth and more of a 3D effect. It means it's not such a flat image. Right. And we're going to also take that around to make more shadow around the clock face. I find this is a very relaxing technique to use. And we take again those parallel lines 
close to each other. I'm going to add a little bit of cross hatching underneath and across there. Right, and across the, to the side of the lines that go down just to show a little bit of shade a little bit down there you can go quickly but it's all just nice and steady slowly to start with just to build up your technique see nice and slowly and across there I hope everybody's doing all right, guys. Hey, thank you for joining this session. We're nearly there. I can't wait to see you when we come back, eh? Hey? Have a nice cup of tea and some biscuits. Right, a little bit more on that side of the clock face and tower to add a little bit of shadow there you go right to the bottom and we can add just to show where the cloud these are cloud formations here by the way these wavy wobbly lines yeah it just shows the detail of the edges of the clouds. It gives it a bit more depth. If it was in colour, it would be a nice light blue. But I'm keeping it one colour, also known as monotone. When you just draw and paint in black and white. And there we have it. Seton Carew Clock Tower.